Okay. Uh, first of all, it's great to be back at the Japan Society, and, uh, and uh, we enjoy our relationship that way. Uh, Tokyo, for the McGraw-Hill companies, has been the headquarters of our Asia-Pacific uh, uh, operations for 25 years now. Uh, and, and we enjoy a terrific relationship in a lot of different ways. One of my colleagues is with me, Doug Peterson, uh, who uh, just joined us from City, uh, and, and he is heading up uh, Standard & Poor's ratings. Uh, and, and we uh, welcome you, Doug. And Doug has lived all with City all over the world, uh, and, and uh, as such has lived a, quite a bit of time uh, in Japan itself. Uh, so uh, it's great to be with you tonight as well, Doug. Um, let's see, uh, in, in terms of, uh, of, uh, of this whole notion of the book, uh, and, you know, by the way, it's a very modest title, Banker to the World. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> when I heard of this, and, and I'm a very close personal friend of Bill's, like everybody in this room is, uh, and, and, uh, and, and so when he was talking to me about this concept of what he wanted to write about, lessons of debt crises and, and all of this, uh, I just knew that it was right in our sweet spot and what we needed to be able to do. So uh, we were able to convince him, and so now I'm not talking to you as his friend, I'm talking to you as his publisher, uh, and, and we had this decision that we were going to do this book, and, and we did. Now, the ink wasn't even dry on this book when Henry Kissinger came out and said this is a must read for anybody in any section and at any level of the finance industry uh, and on that one. Well, no sooner did he do that, okay, Paul Volcker came out and wanted to make a comment about how this is a must read. Uh, and, and it was a must read uh, and he w wanted to put a forward into the book, so we added the forward. Uh, into the book. And then, and then we saw it again when Steve Forbes, uh, another good friend, uh, you know, was working on the European crisis uh, at the time and was trying to make sense of certain aspects. And he came out and said, this is a must read for Angela Merkel, Nicholas Sarkozy, and Dave uh, Cameron. Uh, now, in my way of thinking, he left out some southern uh, European uh, countries that might also have gotten something out of it. But it's easy to see why, you know, after you get a read of it, you know, why so many people need to know what Bill knows and how he knew it and what he did with it uh, in terms of doing it. Now, everybody knows that uh, Bill spent 53 years uh, at Citigroup. Uh, now, uh, I've heard over 50, Bill. I've heard 55 today. Uh, and so we're going to go with over 50. Uh, that's a considerable amount of time. And when you think about that time frame and going back uh, and, and whatever, he was a devout uh, uh, disciple of, a, of, a, of a, our late and great uh, chairman of city, uh, uh, Walter Riston. Uh, Walter Riston is, again, when you talk about Bill and you talk about Walter Riston, you talk about icons uh, in this field. Now, Every single Treasury Secretary uh, would come to see Walter Riston. Uh, and, and there were problems in Argentina. There were problems in Uruguay. There was problems in Peru. There was problems in Brazil. There was problems in Mexico. There was problems in Jamaica. There was problems in Panama. And then we go over here and there was problems in Korea. There was problems in Japan. Then we came over here and we went back to the European crisis. We went down to South Africa. Uh, where there were problems. And in every case, the Treasury Secretary would come and say, look, Walter, I need help. We don't have these kind of people uh, at the Treasury. Can you offer up somebody, uh, you know, that would understand this and be able to deal with it? Now, Walter Riston would always say, uh, I'll, I, I've got the person. Uh, uh, the person's name is Bill Rhodes, uh, but you can't take him. You can only borrow him. Uh, on that. And so, you know, and here was the fun part. Uh, the fun part was every once in a while, uh, Bill Rhodes would go on vacation. Uh, and, and every time he went on vacation, it was Walter Riston who had to call him and tell him, please come back to New York right away in uh, all of that. So the joke was, and it wasn't much of a joke, uh, and it, it was that every time he started talking about going on vacation, people ducked uh, on this one because they knew something was coming. 
And with all the lessons that he has developed and learned and applied to in terms of debt crisis, I'll not name the individual's name, but this one person said, there isn't a debt crisis that Bill Rhodes doesn't like uh, on that part. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, our treat tonight uh, is to be uh, with Bill Rhodes and, ladies and gentlemen, the banker to the world. Thank you very much, Wilbur and Terry, for your very kind comments. I should mention that the, actually the title uh, of the book was The Idea of McGraw-Hill, the publisher, <laughs> just to get that straight. Uh, <clears throat> and I want to thank the Japan Society for inviting me to talk about my book, Banker of the World, Leadership Lessons in the Front Lines of Global Finance. I should mention that in the Japanese edition, I thank uh, the MOF, the Ministry of Finance, and uh, the Japanese banks for having been such great supporters of the work I did on sovereign debt restructurings worldwide for over 30 years. Couldn't have done it without them. Uh, I think Wilbur mentioned that I would be talking mainly about Europe, but I also have some things to say about Japan. We're now uh, in the fourth year entering the fourth year of the crisis uh, in Europe. And it certainly cast a long shadow. I think it's fair to say that the problems in Europe have caused major problems worldwide uh, with the size of that economy, uh, including uh, in Japan, the United States, China. Look at the trade figures worldwide. Uh, in 2010, uh, trade grew at coming out of the Great Recession 13.9%. Uh, in 2011, it was 5%, and I think the final figures for last year, 2012, will be somewhere between 2.5 or 2.7. So it's no wonder that you have the problems you do in major economies worldwide with a slowdown in trade. And I think that, <clears throat> unfortunately, I think that we're going to see a continuation of the problems in Europe, at least for most parts of uh, 2013. Just take a look at the latest figures out of Germany, which was the strongest economy in the Eurozone when it came out. And we have our own problems, as you're aware, here in the United States, notwithstanding getting by uh, the immediate crisis at the end of, of this year on the so-called fiscal cliff. Uh, <clears throat> all we may managed to do was to put off some of the, the biggest decisions for another two or three months. So I think, uh, uh, you know, Europe has managed, and along with a little help from ourselves and elsewhere, has managed to cloud uh, the world economy. In the case of uh, Japan, I think people are very hopeful with the election of, of Shinzo Abe, uh, who wants to finally get Japan out of what's close to two decades of what you might call a lost period of time. And he's come forth, as you know, with his new stimulus package, uh, which is equivalent to uh, 116 billion US, uh, 10 trillion yen, 2.2% uh, of GDP. Uh, a lot of that would go to infrastructure, a lot to the north, to the earthquake area. But of course, we've seen 14 such packages since uh, the late 1990s. And this one has to be different. And also, he's pressing the Bank of Japan. Uh, last time I was here was to uh, introduce uh, uh, Governor Shirakawa several years ago, who I think is a, very, uh, is a very good governor of one of the major central banks in the world, pressing him uh, to put in more monetary stimulus, which I think is necessary. But I, one of the, the points that was made right in this room several years ago by uh, <clears throat> Governor Shirakawa, and I've been with him three times in the last two months, is you know, monetary and fiscal stimulus aren't enough. In the case of Japan, you need major deregulation. Uh, I think uh, uh, major structural reforms, deregulation in the service area. So hopefully that'll all flow into the package 
of the new prime minister. Uh, certainly.